The thirteenth floor, floor. The thirteenth floor. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the thirteenth floor, where the furniture is not always the best, but the views are amazing. I am Brian Jones of BJ, uh, your host, the moderator for this evening. I'm switching seats and taking over um, the thirteenth floor for tonight. But I got my gentleman and a special guest on the night, so we're gonna kick it off, Brett. The other B. Jones. How are we doing tonight, sir? I'm good, man. Highly motivated and ready to get in this thing, man. I'm, I'm very excited to get into this conversation with the soon-to-be master herbalist and talk about all of these uh, products and things that you have. I got to do a little bit of homework in between yesterday and today to, you know, get up on Misha. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this conversation. Well, yeah, don't, don't think this is brand new. We've been talking about you, girl. So... Everybody, we do our research here at the 13th right. floor, right? <laughs> Coach K, how we Coach K, how we doing, sir? Man, I'm good. Listen, I'm looking to cheat off somebody's paper. I ain't do no homework. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I just know that Misha got on the black hoodie like I do. So we in the black hoodie crew. That's so right. we're gonna be all right. We're gonna have fun. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, all right. And ladies and, and gentlemen, and, I want to welcome nail. She even got a black nail and a gray nail. You see that? Oh, yeah, and a purple and a glitter. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> She prepared. She she ready to go. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, let's jump into this, though. So our special guest tonight, Miss Misha Carter, a longtime friend of mine. We go back. We were just talking about it. We go back junior year of high school. So we're 19. Um, right. yeah, we're go back there. No, I'm not. I'm not scared of the show. We, well, junior year. So 97, 98 school year. Yep. Um, at, up in Cincinnati, Ohio, where you currently still reside in Cincinnati, Ohio, right? Yes, I do. Okay, so we go back from there before we were left to go to college, before we left on this adventure called life. Um, but got some great things going on. So we want to bring her on the 13th floor today um, to expose her, expose you to her, and let you understand what it means to be in the driver's seat of your own life. So, Ms. Risha, give us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are. And what's currently going on right now? Let's just start. Let's just start with your nine to five and ease them in slowly with the okay. other stuff we got coming up. All right. Well, uh, first of all, thank you guys for having me on this evening. Um, I'm so happy to be here and be able to talk about you know this uh, this thing. But just you know to introduce myself to all of you. Um, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Born and raised. Um, I've been an educator teaching for about 17 years, middle and high school. Um, currently I'm at Xavier University here in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I work as a part of the TRIO Student Support Services. Um, basically what we do is we work with first generation uh, college students, helping them to navigate while they're on co uh, campus and prepare them for life after graduation. Um, we do that by way of informative seminars, um, community engagement activities and projects, and um, of course, specialized one-on-one -on -one counseling. Um, other things that I've done, you know, that led up to what I'm doing right now, um, I mentor young mothers transitioning from um, foster care into independent living. Um, I help them do everything from balancing the budget, meal prepping, career exploration, and early childhood development. Um, I'm also a philanthropist. Um, I am the co-founder of a nonprofit called One Heart. Um, basically, what we do is we take on projects that foster to the education, spirituality, and physical development of third world countries. Um, we actually have an orphanage that we adopted in uh, Ghana, West Africa, uh, in the Volta region. And um, lastly, I'm also an author. Um, I have my own book by the name of Eris Like Me. Um, through my mentorship and also being um, the daughter of parents who have been doing foster care for over, my goodness, um, 30 years, um, you know, I mentor a lot of their girls and, you know, um, young women that I work with myself. And they were the inspiration for me writing the book, which is all about, um, you know, owning who you are being who who you are and um presenting your best self to the world so we got <laughs> a lot of stuff there packed in there right so a lot of stuff and this is why when we talked about i feel like we on an episode of of, of hey man 
the, the butcher, the baker, the cleaner. The, the, so you want to have tree jobs? You lazy, right. I'm gonna be doing it all. <laughs> but also, so um, mom is is one of those titles as well. Yes. How did I forget that? Yes, I'm a mother of three. I have a believe it or not, I have a 19 year old, a 15 year old, and a 13 year old. Right. So again, we go back junior year in high school, and I I've had the privilege of of standing communication like over the years and just kind of seeing all these different things um develop and we give we communicate back and forth over the years and just like encouragement with one another as far as different projects different things going on um it has just been a blessing to see the growth and uh the road that has been taken down the line right um but we want to we want to start off real quick so we kind of you you unpacked a lot there right um, yeah <laughs> so we talked about you. So you're nine to five. You talked about entrepreneurship, um, and the, the nonprofit world, um, and and all the other ventures that are going in life. So, kind of back up and go to. So outside of a nine to five, starting off in the in teaching that, what drove you to pursue these other things? What what was it that kind of gave you that spark, or that one day hit you over time? But hit you like you know what something else is out there this is not the end all to be all yeah well coming from a family of educators that's like you know how everybody's family has like their family business our family business is education <laughs> so um you know I, my grandmother was a teacher i have aunts that are teachers i have you know cousins and all of that um but also you know through teaching you know my family always was helping the community and that's what I was saying earlier about my parents being foster parents for almost 30 years now and um, them um, taking in only teen moms. And so through working with them and just seeing how, you know, there was a disconnection with preparing these young people for um, life um, and them not having those tools or those resources or, or those skills, you know, pretty much pushed me into diving into other avenues of um, mentorship, philanthropy, and even entrepreneurship. So I can be an example for them, you know, by way of, you know, my own journey. Okay. One of the things we've been talking about is pursuing your passion, right? And, and everybody talks about it. And one of the uh, things that Carol had mentioned to Brett, we were talking specifically about a, a um, the content of your nine to five and then your five to nine and then your your side hustle right um right. but is would you say you're at a point where the nine to five is your outside of being the bread and butter right is that where you see yourself long term no i don't see myself being where i am currently long term um i'm definitely going to be um, a lifelong educator and lifelong learner um, that's, that's forever. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, where I'm at currently, no. <laughs> okay. So we, we know that this will not be, um, promoted to her current em employer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Even though I love what I do though, Carol, I right. love what I do. Right. Okay. Good. As, as, as long, just in case anybody, you know, sells <laughs> you out and, and your employer does listen, she loves working for y'all. So don't. I uh, absolutely do. Right, right, this right. Was, yeah. This was not a setup. <laughs> Right. This is not a setup. <laughs> but also understanding that our nine to five becomes our silent investor. You know, they're the ones, like you said, is our bread and butter, gets the bills paid, keeps us with that good old insurance. And, um, you know, everything else comes after that. You know, our five to nine, our side hustles, all of that. You know, that's where my, my passion kind of goes into. So I want to ask a question. And Misha, we, we need to help some people right now, right? Because there's some people right now that are out there and they know they have something else, but they can't tap into the energy or into the, the thought process that leads them to that next thing, right? So right. take us back and you're nine to five, you probably have one child or, or, or a child on the way mm -hmm. and, and you're thinking of getting into something else, right? What does yeah. that time period look like and how do you make that, that, that jump? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I, I might not say anything else the rest of the whole show. 
<laughs> Great <laughs> question. <laughs> um, I think for me to, you know, take like a hobby, take my hobbies and taking my passion and to, you know, pushing it towards like um, following through when it, you know, like I said, by way of entrepreneurship and philanthropy, um, I was just trying to figure out how can I um, do the things that I love while still having to maintain, you know, that nine to five while still, you know, making sure that, you know, I keep a roof over our head and, the, you know, the lights on. Um, and I think it was just understanding that, you know, I can do it all. Um, I don't have to put, you know, limits on myself. Um, and just, you know, and just going forward. Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you set that balance, right? Between nine to five entrepreneurship, philanthropy, mom, right? There, there's a balance there that a lot of people struggle with. And, and to be honest, look, I, I don't think we ever get that balance totally correct. Right. But there are things that you put in place. So what is that? How do you do that? Well, I think we all make time for the things that we want to do. We, we find the time. And, you know, it's, it's a matter of prioritizing, you know, what needs to be done first, second, third, and then beyond. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it's just a matter of, you know, figuring it out, figuring out what is the, the action plan? What is the objective? You know, how do I get to that? And you, we figure it out. Were there any point in times where you, I, I know there's, there's always time in all lives where it's like, you know what, throwing the towel, this is too much. Um, but specifically, was there a time where pivot point we go back to what we call the pivot right Mm -hmm. you had to make a definitive decision on whether to press on or to continue on with the the status quo the main main mainstay um is there was there a specific time you can pinpoint that you could share with us (laughs) if i can be all the way honest i guess you know on the 13th floor honesty is is uh important Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, I, we talked about earlier how I'm the mother of three children um, and um, I'm also divorced. I'm divorced from their father. And I think um, the pivot point and the aha moment or the lights went on was when I realized that I was going from being in a partnership to being on my own. And I didn't have anyone else that I could make sure that, you know, things were taken care of but me. All I had was me. And so I wanted to, you know, I always say that I want my ceiling to be my children's floor. I want them to build on all of the things that I, you know, could be, you know, go be, go above and beyond anything that I can ever imagine for myself. So at that point, I didn't have a choice because it was me. They only had me. That's fair. I think, I think you're here. What, y'all got a question? Jump in there. I do, I do. Um, I want to change directions a little bit uh, into an area that I was most interested in. It, it involves one of your entrepreneurial endeavors. Um, and I really like to get into how you got into herbaceous natural body care. Um, because I saw a post uh, recently and BJ shared it with us that outlined your story. And I mean, for one, I think it's amazing. Uh, because I know people who struggle with debilitating diseases and that have found uh, natural remedies to, to help cope or help, you know, fight the disease and get to better wellness, better health. Um, so I really like to talk about that um, and then give us a little bit more background on herbaceous and some of the things that you offer. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Before you get to herbaceous. <laughs> we, he wanna get there. we getting there, sir. We getting there. Right, right, right. Hold on. Hold on before you get there, right? Because, again, <coughs> you're right, Misha, the 13th floor is about truth but it's it's about the truth of yourself right and and you just mentioned something that would have crippled most people which was divorce and you already had three people and and the only thing that i want to adjust there is that you didn't divorce a person you divorced a energy that wasn't in line with what you had in store for yourself yes sir right and not and not for my greatest and highest good yes sir not for your greatest and highest good but 
most people stop in that point and they lament on that point and they let that point keep them from getting to the highest and greater good. But you didn't, you didn't do that. You kept on pressing. And I think it's very important that the people understand that some of you right now, you can't get to that higher and greater good because you're sitting there lamenting on the thing that happened and you're not that thing that happened, right? Yeah. You're, you're this energy that can continually flow and continue to increase Right. So just I just wanted to highlight that there because we're talking about somebody that is accomplishing many things. And a lot of times people see somebody like Misha and they think, oh, my gosh, her life is so great. She's so perfect. The road must have been well paved for her. But no, those people that you see that only show you the best of them, there, there's a story behind them. And yep. there's things that drive them that they use as fuel. So I'm going to let you get to herbaceous, but I just wanted to realize that that first herb that came along was somewhere in there in that struggle, and that got you to the to the aceous part, right? So go ahead. I'll, I'll let you take it from Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Thank you, Carol. So it, as, we, as we transition to that part, because that, that is the, the transition. I know Brett is eager to hear about that. And we, <laughs> we, we, know, we know the background that, and we understand <laughs> why, because there is a, there is a, de a definite connection there, right? Um, mm -hmm. and if those have been following the 13th floor and know our stories, understand where this is going in the line of questioning. Um, prior to getting at it, though, um, if you want to share, so one of the things that I do on this, well, first of all, you mentioned the book. So I want to show everybody we do have... <laughs> the Aaron's like me. Um, I had to go back and look. This was 2008, Misha. 2008. So, 2008. so this book came out then. So before, so since then, um, the author piece. What? 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 I, I know you, you talked about having the the um, foster parent, your parents as foster parents, and and seeing the single mothers come in the household and and that. Mm -hmm. um, but what was your overall hope for this book when it when it hit the shelves for young girls to read it because i've shared it with my daughter she has her signed copy in her room <laughs> can i get a signed copy because i definitely was like trying to find that joint and i got like three pages on google and that was about it i think i'm gonna have to go rip one from a library somewhere around here <laughs> i got you brand i'm gonna have to send it to you, you thank you my 10 year old daughter should love that Good. So when you talk about the, the hope for the book, right? What mm -hmm. what was your your goal for distributing that book for, mm -hmm. for the reader, right? Well, when I was writing the book, I actually um did some focus groups where I got, you know, girls together and girls that I actually was working with at the time at a um local community center. And um basically I asked them a line of questions of, you know, what are some insecurities that they think that they had and um you know, what didn't they like about themselves? And so through those focus groups, what I did is I compiled all of that information and the top 13, I pretty much, you know, put together and I make them beautiful in the book. And, you know, the purpose behind it is for girls to embrace all that they are and all that they'll become and that they'll see beauty in every single, you know, part of their life, who they are and different young women around them. And that, that definitely does go. I remember my daughter reading through it the first time and just the look on her face when she was reading it, you could tell. And then we actually did this at her school, we used a book at her school for um, a read aloud. Back in, I think she was in third grade or fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So if you're on, so ladies and gentlemen, make sure look that <laughs> one up. Um, so we got, so I want to move into getting into right now, getting to the um, current venture. Um, yeah. But before we get to current venture, we got to back up a little bit and talk about how we got to that point. So, okay. and I know we're going to get, um, ask a little bit of personal question right now, but you said that you're okay with sharing stuff with us. So I want to back up about two years now, right? Yeah, two about years. Two years now. So mm -hmm. about two years ago, share some light on us, what was going on in your life and then some of the transitions that were happening. Okay. Um, well, two years ago, I, what happened is that I was doing some community work. Um, I was out, you know, in the field, on my feet, 
um, for the majority of the day. And I had on like some flat sneakers, like some Converse. And um, I found that my feet were hurting like really bad. And for, you know, any ladies that are watching this show, they understand that if you have on heels and you know how your feet are like throbbing and hurting and you're like, gosh, I can't wait to sit down and take these heels off. Or I can't wait to get home, take these heels, these heels off so I can get instant relief. So that's why I was thinking like, okay, you know, just when I, when I'm done doing this work, you know, I'll be able to get home, take my shoes off. So once I did get home and I took the shoes off, I didn't get that instant relief, but I didn't think anything about it. I'm like, okay, I had been on my feet all day long, um, took the shoes off, you know, put my feet up, was resting. The next day I wake up and that pain that I was having in my feet had moved up to my knees. And so still at that point, you know, I'm still thinking like, okay, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going on. I know this doesn't feel right. Maybe I was just on my feet too long, you know, whatever. By the end of the day, that pain had moved and the numbness had moved all the way up to my waist. So by that time, um, I found myself going to, you know, urgent care and that led to a lot of different, you know, visits to other urgent cares, the emergency room, and then finally to, and, and being told every time that I went, oh, you know, you probably just have a pinched nerve. Um, also during that time, I was working with a personal trainer. So they were saying, oh, it's probably, you know, muscles that you were using that you didn't know that you had tapped into. And, um, you know, that that's probably what it is. So they were giving me steroids and just trying a whole bunch of different things on me. And it got to the point where I was like, no, I know my body. This doesn't feel like just, you know, a pinched nerve or I'm using muscles that I wasn't um, used to using or whatever. So, someone needs to investigate this further. And so that's when um, my doctor uh, referred me to a neurologist. And after... CAT scans, MRI, spinal taps, bone marrow biopsies, um, plenty of blood <laughs> taken. Um, that's when they found the lesions on my brain and on my spinal cord, which was um, synonymous with uh, multiple sclerosis. Okay. And for our listeners who may not be familiar with either uh, the symptoms or, or the, the characteristics of it, um, you share with us some of the personal things you were going through, but what exactly does that mean? What is somebody who's diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and lesions, um, what does that mean for a person? Okay. Well, basically what multiple sclerosis is, it basically is a disease where the immune system is attacking the protective coating around your nerve endings. And so what happens is that the communication between the brain um, and the body, they don't connect. It's almost kind of like having a, um, a power cord for, or a charger for your cell phone. And you know how the ends are frayed. And sometimes if you move it around, it'll work, but then sometimes it won't, you know, that power bolt will go out. That's kind of like what my body is doing. Um, sometimes, you know, certain parts of the body will get the message from my brain. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. And um, in the cases of where I have lesions, which are, is basically scar tissue, um, on my brain and on my spinal cord. Um, it's places that, you know, the, the part of that body doesn't get the message at all. Um, so, yeah. So I wanted to, again, to give, we always talk about stats and data points. So, and, and looking up and being prepared for the night, I wanted to, to look up some things and I found some interesting facts because one of the things that popped up first was that um, most of the time when people are diagnosed, they're between the ages of 20 and 40. Yeah. Right. So we're not talking about a lot of early onset. Um, mm -hmm. Majority of cases are between the ages of 20 and 40. So that means mm -hmm. a lot of the symptoms that you were experiencing and patching them off for uh, could have been this or could have been that. I'm more active right now. Um, right. But I think one of the things that you did was you said, this is not my I know my body. This is not it. Yeah. And when yeah. The doctors were telling you there was uh, it could, it's probably just this. You're like, no. And I mm -hmm. think that's that's one lesson that I know myself included need yeah. to learn to um, not only listen to, but listen to our bodies, but don't always listen to the professional that, try, that wants to give the steroid or the drug or something to treat something. Um, yeah. And I, I fall into that category, hands down. Um, a lot of changes in made over year, but that's a different story. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things I, I, found, I found interesting though, was like, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. They said 
the further you move away from the equator, the more cases there are. So the closer, the warmer climate you are, you're in everything, you actually have a less chance of um, developing the, the disease. So mm -hmm. I, I had no idea it, like whether it could be a factor in it. So what were some yeah. of the things initially told to you as far as after the diagnosis? Because mm -hmm. one of the things um, that I always like to say, is, and I heard it somewhere years ago, but your diagnosis is not a death sentence. Right. right? So right. diagnosis is just that. This is what it is. Now you make a choice on what's going to happen after there. So right. diagnosis came down. What was Misha's response? Well, just to kind of back up, um, going to what you were talking about, how you found that uh, most people who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, they're further away from the equator. And um, through research, what you know, scientists have found is that um, there is a direct connection between vitamin D deficiency and multiple sclerosis. So that's what that whole being away from the equator or the further you are away from the equator, um, the, the higher your chances are of being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, most people who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis are people of European descent. Um, you know, and with that being said, because most people of color, you know, we are, you know, connected to, you know, being closer to the equator, to, you know, tropical areas where we are getting a lot of vitamin D. Um, but uh, me personally, when I, and, and also I, I wanted to tell you too, um, when you look at symptoms and um, some things that people may see um, in early stages, and even for me, when I look back to um, what I saw, I can remember being kind of a clumsy person um, in my early years. I was always like tripping over stuff or always falling or whatever, but I chalked it up as um, I'm just clumsy. Um, and even some years later, I can remember, you know, going on walks with, you know, my friend and or with the kids or whatever. And I would have this buzzing feeling in my legs. And I would ask, like, you know, is your legs like buzzing? And they're like, no. And I'm like, oh, OK, you know, and I'm just chalking it up like, OK, I'm out of shape. You know, my, my, I'm just buzzing. Um, so other people, they may find that, you know, certain things like, you know, dropping things a lot or like I said, that being clumsy, getting off balance. Um, even um, symptoms such as like um, your eyesight starts to fail when before you may have had like really good eyesight. Um, those are some symptoms that may show up. Um, but for me, when I got the diagnosis, uh, <laughs> I was almost kind of like, um, I was numb and, and numb for a few reasons. Um, my mother's older, oldest sister actually died about 30, 30 plus years ago um, due to complications of having multiple sclerosis. And um, of course, then it wasn't a lot of research that was being done as far as like treatments and cures and, and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I just know that, you know, talking to my mother, she was upset and she was fearful before I got the diagnosis that that could have been it. And so when I first got it, it was just like, okay, you know, it was a, a little bit of relief. I'm happy that I know now. And my first question, Ryan, was, can I die from this? And when my neurologist told me no, I said, all right, we got to figure this out. I, I love it. You know me, I'm, I'm like, it's not, it's not a death sentence. Um, and and sometimes when people deliver a message like that, again, we go back to that pivot point is, am I, what am I going to do with this information? Am I going to use it to thrive? Right. Or I'll go back to care what lament in, in that situation. Right. Um, okay. So, the, so this has been the time. So what, what things have you been doing um, since then to kind of help out? And then that, that will lead directly into, well, I know where Brent wants to go. Oh, I said, can we get back to our bases? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're getting there right now. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, actually, after having a conversation, like I said, with my neurologist, and um, she was saying, uh, you know, after asking that question, you know, can I die from this? She was saying how there's so many different drugs that are on the market right now that really can help me and, you know, treat my symptoms and all of this. And um, it was so many different trial medications I had tried, steroids, um, just all of that, because for those who don't know, there is no cure for multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. um, 
all the medication that is on the market right now and even being tested is just to treat the symptoms. Mm -hmm. so, um, some of the medication that they had me on early on was bringing on things like seizures. Um, I had really bad anxiety. Um, I was calling, uh, when I go back to talking about the seizures, I was calling them like episodes because it was like having a seizure and a stroke at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was having those like three, four times a day. And so I went back to my doctor and I told her, if this is something that is supposed to treat my symptoms and all it's doing is making me worse, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And so I was grateful um, to have a doctor that understood that and understood that there was other methods of healing. And so she, you know, by way of our conversation, she said, well, have you ever thought about holistic healing? And um, through that, you know, I started doing, you know, my research. I started looking into um, just some things that it was in my, within my control to try and aid in my healing. And, mm -hmm. You know, just some of the research that I did, I learned that, um, you know, 65% of everything that we put on our skin goes directly into our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And so if I can have control over the little things like my beauty care products, the things I wash my hair with, the lotions I use every day, just like I had control over that medication that I was putting inside my body, I was going to take control over what I put on my body. And in doing so, that's, I guess, what led you to start the herbaceous movement and creating all of the lines and stuff and, and, and things of that nature. So how has that been doing for you? How long have you had that? Well, uh, herbaceous actually got its inception um, as a business in, in 2018. <laughs> but, Moving out of the truck for a little while, huh? Right. <laughs> I've been making my own like beauty care products and everything for a while now because I actually get all of my butters, like my shea butter, my cocoa butter, my um, African black soap. I get it sent directly to me from my pseudo family that's in Ghana, West Africa. Mm -hmm. So I had always been making this stuff for myself. And, you know, it was something that I would, you know, gift to family members and friends. And, you know, I got the push like, hey, you know, this is working for you this is you know this is some good stuff have you ever thought about selling it mm. and so through that conversation i'm like you know what what beats a failure but a try and mm. you know i put it out there and it you know people like it i guess <laughs> <laughs> i think that's really amazing especially the way that you get to get back to i guess the ethnic roots and in ghana and stuff and um when you when you started creating your own products and experimenting did you find it very difficult to do um, no, I mean, because the research is out there. I mean, we, we, I think a lot of times we don't realize that just how much information is out there. If you, if you go looking for it, we have the world at our fingertips and, mm -hmm. so, you know, doing all of the research and seeing all of the, um, you know, the different things when it comes to, you know, certain herbs and fruits and oils and, you know, all of those different methods that really can, you know, aid in our overall health it's here it's it's on the earth you know it's in our plants it's in our trees it's in our sunlight you know we just have to um you know just just look at the research and figure out how it can work for you i think that is amazing i think that's amazing so i noticed in what i was looking at um as far as your background and things with herbaceous that there's a cbd line of products as well <laughs> Can we speak about that a little bit? Because I think that this is obviously, I mean, if you missed it, I don't know how, but CBD is the craze for, for everything, but it does offer a vast amount of benefits for our, you know, overall wellness and health. Um, so I'd like to talk about that, that for a little while or a little bit, just to see where you are in those and, and the development of those products. Absolutely. Well, for those who don't know about CBD oil, um, CBD comes from the hemp plant, which is like the cousin to the marijuana plant. Um, the difference between CBD and the marijuana is that it does not have the chemical THC, which is the mind altering chemical um, that you will find in marijuana. Um, but through, you know, research, you know, uh, 
studies have shown that CBD oil can cure certain things as, you know, muscle pains, um, nerve pain, uh, menstrual cramps, epilepsy, um, you know, fatigue. I mean, it's, it goes on and on and on. And so that's why you're seeing like this craze right now, especially with the legalization of marijuana. People are looking for and, and, and people are doing research about, you know, mar- uh, medical marijuana. So, but they don't want that high. So that's <laughs> where the, um, the research went to the hemp plant and they're noticing that there are similar Um, if not, benefits from the uh, CBD oil, which comes from the hemp plant. Mm -hmm. So in in your line of products, like what what exactly are you offering? And I don't want to get it too much, too too deep into like your proprietary stuff, because I know you might have some patents pending and things like that, especially with the, you know, master herbalist certification (laughs) coming soon, you know, but, but what, what products are you actually putting out? Like, do you have a, a set line of things that we can go get? Sure. Um, Right now you can find um, our, uh, what I call our, uh, it's our whip shea butter. Um, We also have exfoliating sugar scrub, um, lip balm, natural deodorant, um, African black soap. Um, I also put together my own um, elderberry green herbal tea. Um, Because I don't take, and I I didn't tell you guys this, but um, I'm currently not on any medication. Um, the only thing I take is um, vitamins, um, my herbs, um, I use my oils, I meditate, um, I practice that attitude of gratitude, and um, just making sure that I'm staying around positive people. And so um, with my line of herbal teas with elderberry, um, we know that that's a natural immune booster. And um, I use elderberry syrup every day, and um, it keeps my immune system um high and um, at bay because that is the main thing that attacks my um, the protective coating around my nerves. Mm -hmm. And each of these products, are they all CBD infused or are they kind of separate into separate? Not yet. Right now we just have the whipped uh, body butter Mm -hmm. with the CBD and for whatever reason, I mean, I guess it's because of the craze. We cannot keep it on the shelves Um, because I make all of my products myself. And Mm -hmm. um, that is the line of products that is going really fast. So I'm looking at infusing more of my products with the CBD oil. Awesome. Awesome. I definitely would like to talk to you offline a little bit more about that. Um, But I do have another question, just being in that space as a small business um, operating, it seems in the health and beauty products uh, arena. um, Do you, it it doesn't sound like you find much uh, difficulty competing against some of the giants and, you know, making yourself, you know, known within the industry or within the space. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, for me, what I had to recognize is that it is other people that are, you know, making the whipped shea butter, that's doing the exfoliating sugar scrubs, that's making the natural deodorant. Um, but it was someone who sent an article to me um, that said that if you ever are doubting your dreams of entrepreneurship and the product that you're trying to produce, just walk down a bread aisle and look at all of the different brands of bread that's, you know, that's in that aisle. It's the same thing, you know, they all are even packaged the same, but they all had their different markets. They had their different customers that get it. So for me, I look at it like, you know, I'm pushing out a quality or quality products, but people are going to buy into me and into my story and what I've done. And that doesn't take away um, any love, any money, any shine from anybody else because it's enough for all of us. I love it. I love the energy. I love the attitude, man. I wish you nothing but success. And I, I definitely see that it's going to come to you just with, just by the way that your energy is and how you're moving about things and going about things. The, the humility with all of that, you know, success and the success to come, it, it, it just, I, I see great things happening in the future. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. BJ, we back to you, buddy. <laughs> I, saw, I saw Carol sit up. I thought he had a question to tag on to that or a statement. I didn't sit up. I don't even think I moved. I think I might have leaned in a little bit. I'm, just, I'm glad I didn't do any homework ahead of time because the story that we are hearing is just, you know what I mean? Like I thought we were doing something back when we were at three kids and divorce, and then now then we get to MS. 
I, I mean, I told you guys, it's not it's not a a single line story. You got multiple points here that's going to take you on a journey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, yeah. I couldn't yeah. tell y'all everything because I, I I can't even say that I know all the story, right? Like we can be here for years, but I I don't know. I'm hearing stuff now for the first time, right? Yeah. So I, I'm hearing bits and pieces, but it all makes sense to me because I know I know her drive and, and the passion that when she follows finds something. She's gonna put her full foot into it, right? Absolutely. There's no stopping it until she says she's done with it. Absolutely. The next one? I, it's been repeated, repeated time and time again over the years and the different things she's done. So I knew what the what we were gonna to expect tonight, but I couldn't paint that picture for you guys. So I just wanna I just wanna ask you. You said something, and I I think I wrote it down correctly. Did you say what beats a failure makes a try? What beats a failure but a try? Yeah, but a try. Okay. Same, same. I'm, I'm good with it, but I wanted to put it down the way you said it. All right. That's one of my grandma isms. My oh, my, grandma, I, I like my grandma used to say that all the time. I like grandma. <laughs> Those of you out there, if you didn't get it, what beats a failure but a try? Mm. Yeah. Woo! A, lot of, a lot of people are stuck right there. Can't get past that one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you just got so many great examples, man. I mean, it's it's so inspiring to hear somebody, you know, that's dealt with such adversity, um, come through so much, but been able to produce so much and give so much. I mean, we didn't touch, we, we scratched the surface when it came to the educator. We only scratched the surface when it came to the, you know, philanthropist. We, you know, we didn't get very deep into that, but you've you've been given much as far as opportunity it seems like you've taken advantage and then passed that on you know to your community and those who you can impact so you've taken you know that seed and sold it in so many different ways um i mean it's so inspiring and i think that you know we find that pivot point you know that that brian talked about earlier or find that little piece of us that's that passion that's going to take us past you know the nine to five and it's going to get us into you know what we really want to do that's when you start seeing the magic happen and you know it's just so apparent in everything that you share with us today thank you so much i appreciate that and 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 you said that people's family like there, there's an occupation that becomes the family occupation but <laughs> I think for you it goes beyond educator and I have a feeling if you look back you'll find that you have some fighters in your family yes. line. absolutely and, and, I, and that's the family business is fighting is getting through uh, things that other people wouldn't get through mm -hmm. um, and it's just awesome to see that just displayed in the lineage and, and for us to be able to get, get to that and see that and hopefully the people that are listening like don't just take the individual things that have happened, put everything together and think that any one of those things would have debilitated most people because most people don't want to fight beyond what that thing is that happened much more three different things, right? Which we all know that there's probably even more to these stories that we won't bring out right now, but just know that you're sitting there right now with something simple. Absolutely. And don't want to fight. Misha, what you got for the people to close out? Like we're gonna we're gonna bring this into a close for now. That just means you gotta come back later on in another show. We can get Absolutely. deeper into all the other stuff going on. But what's the one if you had to list out a one thing or a couple of things that you want the listeners to take away from now after after all the gems you've dropped already, right? <laughs> <laughs> what what else, what do you want them to take away from the conversation we've had tonight? What what give me two or three things that you want any listener right now to walk away and say, I can do this right now, or I need to think about this. Right. Um, I think my takeaway from all this is that you know the power to uh, of how we want our life to go, the trajectory that we want it to go, it lives within you. You just need to um, sit with yourself figure out what your objective is, and then come out, come up with your action plan. Simple as that. It may sound easier than done because <laughs> I, you know, we know a lot of people that, um, you know, don't want to take that, that leap, don't want to take that jump. It's, you know, that's too risky. Um, but you can have it all. You don't have to just, you know, leave one thing to go to another. But you are the creator. You are the orchestrator of your life. Everything that you want lives within you. All right. 
All right. Brett, what you got for us, man? This week, you got anything, any tidbits for us before you get out, get out of here? I know, I know, I see, I see your, your wheels turning already, man. I see, I see it. <laughs> man, I don't know, man. I'm really just trying to catch up, man. Last week was a rough week for me, man. Like, I, I did a whole lot, you know, work-related and got to sleep a little bit over the weekend. So, you know, it's, it's refreshing to come here and just be able to sit and talk and not have to, you know, wreck my brain on how to direct the conversation. So I'm really just appreciative right now. i um, appreciative to have made, you know, a connection that I think, um, you know, I want to, you know, see how far it'll go um, with Misha tonight and having her on the podcast. Appreciative of you stepping in and moderating and things and appreciative of Carol and all his wit and what he's going to take us home with. <laughs> oh, I sound to me like you just appreciative to be a spectator today. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, you know, sometimes. <laughs> hey, before we get to Coach Cato, uh, uh, Misha, you got to let the, the people know how to get uh, in contact with you, man, how we can get some of this herbaceous stuff on our skin and in our souls. Yes. Um, well, um, right now, uh, you can find me on social media, uh, on Facebook at Herbaceous Apothecary, um, and on Instagram at Herbaceous underscore Apothecary. Um, we're in the process of. Hold on, hold on, Misha. Uh, hold on, Misha. Hold on, Misha. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Know where you're going I for this one. Stop you. You got to spell apothecary. <laughs> Come on, man. We educated around here on the 13th floor. You, know, man, like, you know how to spell apothecary. It ain't like they trying to spell phlegiology. People out there right now just like. <laughs> Apotha who? Apothecary. Herbaceous spelled H E R. B A C E O U S apothecary spelled A P O T H E C A R Y. Yeah, they would have all kind of eyes, eyes up in the herbaceous, herbaceous right? <laughs> I'm with you, listeners, man. I got your back, man. I believe in you. Y'all can spell it. Thank you, bro. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Listen, I, I just want to make sure the people can get to you. Man. I don't want them to hit to where this, this site doesn't exist or this user not found because people need to find you. Uh, it's we're not drop, we're, we're we'll, drop, we'll drop the hashtag under the ads in the, in the post. We post this too as well. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, people need to find you. Like, like I, you got a story, and I don't know if that's one of your products, but it needs to be one of your products. Thank you so much. Thank you. And just know that, I mean, for me, what, what has worked, like I said, through meditation, through having my herbs, um, you know, a plant-based based diet, natural exercise, and being around positive energy, I'm not on any uh, multiple sclerosis medication. Um, all of my levels are in the normal range, and that's my hemoglobin, um, you know, things with my thyroid, everything. Um, and I've also regained um, the feeling back in my lower extremities. The only thing that's still numb is my feet but I don't have any issues with my eyes, nothing. And this is all without modern medication. Amen. Right. There it is. I just want to make sure, so when you say you don't have issues with your eyes, one of the things that happens to some people with multiple sclerosis is that they, they actually lose their sight. Yes, they do. Right? So, I mean, it, people don't really understand the depth and the scope of what we're talking about, multiple sclerosis. Like you heard some of the symptoms, but it goes way further than what we talked about. Oh yeah, um, and it's just awesome. Like, you, I really want y'all to understand the power of this young lady, and mm -hmm. and 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 what she is doing, um, and just know that, like Brett over here talking about how rough his week was last week. You, the week, <laughs> week was nothing <laughs> compared to what we just heard. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry, no, nah, it's on you, brother. It's on you. Huh? Wrap it up. So we we got it's on me wrapping it up. In contact. It's up to you to wrap it up, man. Okay, but um, first, like, if I was hosting right now, I would tell the people, um, hey, look, if you want to hear more stuff like this, you can hear us on uh, SoundCloud, you can I hear us on iTunes, you. Vimeo, Google Play, uh, YouTube, uh, IG, uh, you can find all those places, ladies and gentlemen, and, and look, uh, this will not be our last time having Misha on, and BJ's probably going to say that again um, after I drop this, but there were so many nuggets today um that misha dropped and it's just man it's just uh, it's just unbelievable um and there was a message that i was going to drop on my personal ig but man i guess i'm gonna put it out here now because 
Misha tied right into it. And uh, <laughs> she said, I want my ceiling to be my children's floor. <laughs> and there are some of you that are out there right now that you're not getting to that thing that you're supposed to do because you're too busy looking for the external solution to your problem. Not realizing that you have an internal thing that is a solution for somebody else's problem or for somebody else's life. And if you focus on that internal thing and get it out, and somebody gets what they need, life is going to come back to you. And it's going to give you that thing that you need. So stop looking for that external validation and use your internal ability, your internal nature, your internal being to help someone else, right? Those symptoms that you're feeling right now is just like when you put food in the fridge for too long and it starts to spoil. That's that thing that you got inside of you and you ain't getting it out. It's starting to spoil. That's what's really making you sick. Mm. See what I'm saying? And you need to get that thing out. Go feed somebody else and your cure will come to you. And don't forget what beats a failure, but a try. And that's not mine. That's Misha's. That's Misha's <laughs> grandmama's. And we're going to put out what grandma says. So Misha, uh, it, man, I'm inspired. There ain't too many people that come on here and I say, woo, I was inspired. Um, <laughs> boys and everything. Yeah, these cats, uh, they inspired me. But uh, yeah, you, you, you brought it today. Gentlemen, thank you for the thought, Misha. Thank you for your time. We know you got a lot of stuff going on, but we appreciate you taking the time out to come up to the 13th floor and, and have this chat with us. And again, you will be back because there's, there's other things we got to dig deeper in. And I know you probably got some things coming up that we just need to explore and put out there for everybody, right? We promote yeah. people, we, we promote positive energy, like you said, and we just want to make sure that everybody gets the message. And again, all you can do is give them the message. What everybody chooses to do with it is their own, is their own decision, right? But if you give them, give them the information, you've done your part. Thank you for coming on tonight. Gentlemen, K already dropped us where we can get, um, pick us up at. That was my closing. You tell um, them again. Go ahead, close it again. All right. <laughs> if you don't know, you don't follow us. You can follow us on all social media, 13th floor, please. Um, but you can pick up the, the podcast at on SoundCloud, Vimeo, um, Google Play, iTunes, anywhere you can pick up. Your, your, your regular music and listening pleasures, you can find us there as well, right? Search for the 13th floor. Um, look for our faces. We're on episode 130, 130 right now. So you got 129 other episodes to catch up on if you did not um, hear any of these. Yeah, you got a long way to go, Misha. <laughs> <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about that conversation. <laughs> but she's going to be up there. So again, gentlemen, thank you, Misha. Thank you much. Um, and we out on the 13th floor. The first is not always the best, but the views are amazing. Are amazing. Thank you guys. One the 13th floor. floor. The 13th floor. floor.